Hello everybody, you're listening to the Arch on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain. This is the weekly radio show where we chat about the local arts news. We have a different guest on each week. We head over to the Rye Light Zone for a short story and or some poetry. We catch up with Tangling Jack Ford in the Oak Shed for a weekly album review. And we play local, unsigned and or independent music. As always, you can find us on Facebook by searching for the Arch Show on Wickham Sound. You should be able to find us. We are repeat on Wickham Sound on Monday nights or on the Wickham Sound Listen Again, iTunes, Spotify and wherever else you get your podcasts. Please do leave us a review on your podcast platform of choice. And you can reach out to me here at the studio by dropping me an email on dane.cobain at wickhamsound.org.uk. That's D-A-N-E dot C-O-B-A-I-N at wickhamsound.org.uk. I'm particularly keen to hear from poets, performers, musicians, people with MP3s to share local arts news. Don't hesitate to get in touch. So this week we're going to be chatting to musician Young Era, but before we do that, we are going to head over to the Rylight Zone for some more flash fiction by A.B. Frank. The cells of the Order of Occult Eradication were a lonely place. Not a place where joy and laughter frequent in the dark, dank depths. A place where whispers carry and unsettling sounds cease not. In the corner, I can see the entirety of the cell and the creeping shadows beyond the door. Fear has pinned me to this spot, alone with my thoughts. The menacing sound of approaching footsteps stirs me. They stop outside my cell and the key turns. Metal hinges screech as the door is pushed open. Two silhouetted members of the OOE enter the room and loom over me. I flinch as one thrusts a hand in my direction, but there is no impact. Take this statement, he says, his voice stern. Learn it. I open one eye to find him holding a piece of paper for me to take. The other speaks next. Tomorrow, you'll recite the contents of that note to the court. The statement is riddled with lies. Lies I must tell to free myself while condemning an innocent man. Incriminating evidence of occult practice has undoubtedly been planted, waiting for discovery once my statement is delivered. I must find my courage when I recite the statement. This is where my training will help me. I know I will have an ally present in the courtroom, someone who will see me deliver a second message simultaneously. While I speak those lies, I will discreetly signal that I'm under duress, using a code known to very few people. Big thank you to A.B. Frank for this week's entry into the Rye Light Zone. You're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain, and this is Straight 8 with Move On Up.
breath You lost yourself, you lost your way Find your voice and you can find the words to say Talk about it Stand up tall, shout it out Shout it out again Slip away into this endless night and sleep Take my heart and take my soul, they're yours to keep Be one To a time when we have those forgotten nights again You'll find yourself a soul, a reason to begin And we'll fall away When all is said and done And you're the only one Find a place Disappear without a trace Slip inside The person that you left behind Then follow your heart Tear it apart Make a new song You'll find your way You're gonna find your way Slip away into this endless night and sleep Take my heart and take my soul They're yours to keep Rewind to a time when we have this forgotten nights again You'll find yourself a soul a reason to begin And we'll fall away When all is said and done And you're the only one And I'll take your hand Cause you can understand You can never plan When you lost yourself and you lost your way You're gonna find that voice and the words to say Rewind to a time when we had Those forgotten nights again You'll find yourself a soul A reason to begin And we'll fall away When all is said and done And you're the only one That was Rewind by Serenade the Stars, and before that we had Move On Up by Straight 8. You're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain, and it's time for us to be joined in the studio now by this week's guest, Young Garrett. Cool. So the first question is one, uh, you may or may not have an answer to this one, but it's one I ask everyone, which is, uh, what was the last book that you read and what did you think of it? Uh, the last book I read, it was called something like um, How Not to Give a swear word about life or something <laughs> nice <laughs> yeah, it's it it pretty good <laughs> and and were there any lessons that you oh. learned from that is that something that, is that like your approach to life do you think it was basically just like you know just keep doing what you're doing don't worry about people's opinions and just crack on <laughs> awesome cool well obviously today i mostly want to chat to you about your music and i, I thought the a good place to start would be to ask you to well, first of all, introduce yourself to make sure I'm saying uh, your artist name right. And uh, I wondered where where does the name come from? Cool, man. Yeah. So the name is Young Era. Everyone always gets it confused because it's got a V in it. Uh, mm. Basically, my surname's Young. Falling yeah. into music was a bit of an error. And then uh, I put a V there because so many other artists have used the word Young. And the V stands for voracious, truthful and honest. So then Young Era was born. Awesome. <laughs> Cool. Awesome. And so, um, like, in terms of the music that you make, um, you know, do you play instruments? Do you write music, the music yourself? Um, you know, how, do, how does your how do your songs come about? 
Yeah, man, basically. So I play with a guitar, so I'm an acoustic player. Um, all the music I do are original. So I started music up in lockdown. So it's only been a new journey for me, but I was just writing, getting it all out. And yes, yeah, so it's all been original music that I've been working on. And uh, I sit me in the guitar, mate, anything I want to write about or I'm feeling stressed about, I just get it down on paper, I'll find a nice melody. And then that's how I mean, all the music I've been doing has been been working. So it's been pretty cool. Yeah. Well, then you you mentioned to me, I think during Frogfest, you were um, you were busking, right? Um, and I suppose the fact that it's just you and a guitar, that makes it a lot easier for you to go out and busk rather than, say, people who need, you know, a complicated setup or, or you know, all this gear. If it's just you and a guitar, you can play, you know, wherever, right? Yeah, mate, I love it. Um, busking is probably it's one of my most enjoyable ways of actually doing music because it's so unpredictable and you're always meeting new people like every day and the, the change of scenery is always fantastic but i've got a really good little setup and to be honest i actually prefer doing that than sometimes doing it on stage <laughs> yeah yeah well i suppose as well like the feedback's almost more immediate because like again when you're on stage you play your set and then maybe you chat to people after the gig or whatever but when you're busking you know people will just come up to you and you know if if you're lucky, they might wait for you to finish your song before they start talking to you. You know what I mean? Yeah, mate, it's good. I mean, the human interaction with Buskin is fantastic. I've met so many cool people and genuinely just building up a you know a more organic following, especially in this day and age where everything's just online based. Um, for yeah. me personally, I don't really like that stuff, so I prefer just being out there all day, every day, and you know, getting that real feedback, getting people to hear the songs for the first time live, and. Uh, it's, it's just really enjoyable apart from the problems that come with busking which at the minute i've been facing a lot of them in my local borough of the so i live in between Perwick and uxbridge but mm -hmm. hillenden council uh they're trying to stop busking so they're trying to charge 37 pound 50 an hour to busk in the local area which obviously no one can afford so yeah i got the local press team involved recently and we went out last weekend we had a team of 10 of us i was out there busking uh, we had petitions ready so we collected over 150 signatures last week to try and change it basically and we're going to be doing that this weekend as well it's just ridiculous but yeah. you know onwards and upwards with with it and hopefully we do make some change yeah well that's awesome and that shows like because i think people are aware that you know music can be used for you know to affect social change um but that's a really great example of it in action and is that something you try and do with your music in general like are you trying to like change attitudes and change mindsets with the music you make yeah, man, 100%. I think the uh, avenue of music that I've gone down is definitely more about, you know, connecting with those human emotions and bringing, bringing happiness and, you know, making people feel again. I think over the last couple of years, everybody's become quite isolated and disconnected from the world, especially with, you know, just social media and technology in general. So what I've been trying to do with all the songs that I've been writing and that is just really trying to, you know, tell my story, but also connecting with everyone else's story in this world that we live in at the minute. So it's definitely yeah. been, uh, yeah, it's been working quite nicely and I've been really enjoying it. Yeah. And I guess that's kind of a theme of your your single, right? Text Talking. So how, lo how long has that been out and uh, what's it about? Text Talking came out, uh, I think, two weeks ago. And yeah, the idea of that song is basically just about, you know, like texting someone you're into or texting your friend kind of thing, you know, like being lost in a world behind the screen. And I've tried to make it in such an upbeat way with these cool licks and that. And it basically is just talking about like, you're lying in bed, you've had a few beers, you know, you, you're losing your mind, this whole world is crazy, you're trying to talk to people, you're not getting responses, all that kind of thing, all merged into this kind of like, I've been talking, talking to you, this like, you know, upbeat summary song. <laughs> awesome. And is that, that's part of the, the new album, right? Yeah, man. So uh, I've, my debut album, it's been a not long time in progress, we recorded it last year, it took 10 days to do it. It's called Definitely T. Um, it's a, it's kind of that brick rock avenue and i'm hoping to release it by the end of this summer but it's definitely that's one of the singles off the upcoming album definitely t cool and um where's that what's that going to be available like, i'm guessing like Sp uh, spotify but also physical formats and stuff yeah man so um it's going to be going across all social platforms obviously to the standard and then uh at the minute i've done these like hand printed ones i spent hours yeah. slugging away doing so I've been selling those whilst I'm busking, like limited edition things, which has been pretty cool. So they're the first people who are getting hold of it. But moving forward, I've been doing stuff with HMV, um, live and local with HMV. Mm -hmm. So they're looking to probably, well, they've said that they're up for stocking it. So the moment I've got it, you know, all ready to go, then hopefully we'll be whacking that across the HMV stores and a few independent record stores 
across England for now, and then we'll see what happens with it. <laughs> awesome. And what can you tell us? Uh, can you tell us anything about any of the other tracks that are on the album? So you've told us a bit about text talking and what that's about. Um, can you give us a bit of a you know a heads up of what to expect? Yeah, man. There's a single on it um, I released last year called How Many Times. That's probably been one of my most successful like releases. Uh, it basically looks at the idea of how many times can you fall in love uh, and realistically you can only fall in love once for the first time so it looks at that concept of you know falling in love for that actual first time mm -hmm. and uh, it's been yeah, it's a really nice song and then there's a few others on there that are really cool so i don't want to give them all away but, um there's one called gold roses actually which was about going out in london and camden and uh it looks at basically just going out with your mates you know getting a bit mashed up and then uh, like just so much craziness happening around and going to all the different venues like spirit bar the camden eye because they wouldn't let me play more than two songs one night so i had a yeah. bit of a tantrum <laughs> um, that's on there and the music video for that will be coming out in a few weeks so that's quite exciting and then there's seven seven more songs on there and they're all all different and all you know really upbeat and yeah quite proud of them so hopefully the rest of the world will like them too <laughs> awesome and who do you you know who's on your team for the for the music video do you just shoot and edit all of that yourself or do you work with anyone to to bring those to life i've been fortunate in that situation where uh, a lot of people have just wanted to get behind what i'm doing so the last the last couple of videos i've just had people like people like met me at gigs and stuff who've turned mm. out to be videographers and they've just been like i've pitched the idea to them about what i'm doing with music and the album and these crazy ideas and they've kind of just got back there uh, behind it so gold roses was done by a kid called elliot and then they've got another video that's ready to go for a song on the album called all my life that's been done by my mate henry who's uh we're gonna shoot in the text talking video in los angeles next month so mm -hmm. i'm flying out there in 12 days for that so cool. yeah it's been just people just liking the liking the music and just you know wanting to be involved and i help them by promoting their stuff and you know sharing yeah. them working as a little unit to be honest so yeah you know. and everyone wins kind of thing and well I, I wanted to ask you so because is is that why you're going out to LA or is that just something you're doing while you're out there like uh because I know you mentioned you were flying out to LA so so that was my question is what are you doing out there so the biggest things flying out there is uh, I'm going out there to obviously promote the upcoming album um mm -hmm. I went out to LA last year for a month and had a little tour out there where I went out and played a few venues and built quite a good relationship out of there with these people and I was busking a lot so I'm going out there I'm going to be staying in Santa Monica LA area and mm -hmm. then just busking every day promoting the album getting this music video done and then which is the biggest gig of my life is coming up where I've been booked to um Viper Rooms on Saturday 29th of July so if you know anything about Viper Rooms it's Johnny Depp's old a uh, place that used to have back in the 90s which were all the celebrities hanged out and I think you've had the likes of like Johnny Cash play there Oasis play there so I've got a little headline spot there so that's the main reason and just to get away for a bit you know go and see some friends and just get a bit of sun mate and just yeah keep doing the music out there it's a different response out there you know London's yeah. been a bit, London's been a bit difficult where I find here everyone's just trying to like rival against each other and the music kind of gets lost Whereas out there, you know, being not from there, you, you're more like they're more open to listening to music and they really enjoy it more. I think, yeah. you know, people like the Beatles did that. Oasis did that. You know, Harry, even Harry Styles went out there on his solo thing to go and smash it out there and then come back. Yeah, It seems for me, it's like the kind of avenue I like to and the traveling, you know, it's refreshing. So, yeah. 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 You're listening to the Art Show on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain. I'm here in conversation with Young Era, and this is Humans Can't Reboot with I Do. Cause you'll never leave 
That was I Do by Humans Can't Reboot. You're listening to The Archer on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain, and I'm joined here in conversation now by this week's guest, Young Gera. So, and you mentioned, I think I think I read on your website somewhere, uh, talking about going back to the album, Definitely Tea. Uh, you talked about like the different, you know, there are different kinds of teas. People drink their tea in different ways. Um, so I wondered, what do the different teas and colours represent to you? And also, how do you take your tea? <laughs> so basically the idea of that man is the you know each song has kind of got a different feeling and a different color behind it so i kind of connected it with the definitely tea so each song's got a different feeling a different emotion um and yeah i wanted to make it a bit quirky so that was that little idea a little play on words with the whole album mm-hmm. thing but the way i take my tea to be honest i don't actually drink normal tea <laughs> mate. I, I like uh, green teas and herbal teas yeah. so just boiling water with a nice herbal tea that's me sorted for the day <laughs> yeah awesome i can imagine actually that will that'll probably go down well in in uh in america as well just because it's the, the british cliche isn't it that we're a nation of uh a nation of tea drinkers yeah man the reason for the name definitely tea was actually uh it's a bit of a bit of a joke between um you know oasis released definitely maybe in 1994 mm-hmm. uh, i was born in 1994 in the same month that definitely tea came out so then when i was yeah. like thinking of the name to do it because all my influences have been like Oasis, you know, people like Dermot Kennedy, Ben Howard, mm-hmm. and, this, and Oasis have been a big imp- input to my, you know, writing style and things like that. So I thought it'd be quite cool to just be like, call it Definitely T. Then people will look at that and I was thinking they might be able to think, ah, oh, this is obviously in that brick rock style, you know? Yeah. So yeah that was it's like a so, so little nod to it kind of thing because because i picked up on that as well but i wasn't sure like how whether it's deliberate or not but it's it <laughs> definitely like it does remind you of that um and so yeah so that's that's pretty cool okay well i know i wanted to ask you so you've put you you know you mentioned some of the stuff you've been doing with hmv and you've played in store at hmv um what was it like to play in store like because i imagine for you who do a lot of busking was it kind of similar to busking or uh, <laughs> did it feel more like a like a full gig to you what what, what was it like yeah, it was cool, man. I did one in um, I did one in Uxbridge, and then I did one in High Wycombe back to back. It was that it was it was a bit weird. It was a different environment, but it was cool. It's like a lot of people, you know, mm. they're shopping for their records and that, and then they're just all yeah. like, well, but they're all a bit confused. And I think it's cool to see they're like, wow, this is cool seeing live music inside H and V. So yeah. uh, I really enjoyed it. To be fair, man, it was quite a good little footfall on the day that I went there, and yeah, a lot of people were you know taking pictures, videoing it, trying to like asking who I was. So. It was a really positive thing to do and seeing them they're doing it all the time now which is fantastic yeah. i think it's a really good thing that they're doing and it's you know it's kind of bringing back that old old uh era of music you know like back in the day when it, you'd have that kind of in the record shops and that yeah yeah I'm yeah well, doing I know... this saturday are you where in wickham uh oxbridge this saturday oxbridge. i'm playing in, playing in high wickham friday night at the mad squirrel at cool. 8 30. so if you're free awesome <laughs> awesome well and i wanted to ask you like what are some of your favorite venues to to uh to play at oh mate i've uh favorite ones it's been quite a few to be honest uh my favorite venue i've ever played i can't even think of the top of my head i played yeah. i played bournemouth air festival last year which isn't a venue but that was probably one of my favorite things was you know played in front of a couple of thousand people and that was definitely one of like the the moments of like yeah this is what i want to do for the rest of my life kind of thing yeah but there's ugh, there's so many in london that i've played they're all uh they've all been enjoyable you know they've not yeah yeah so but cool. definitely the viper rooms is the one i'm looking forward to man yeah for sure yeah well we'll have to ask you about that we'll check in with you when when you played there um okay and so you've described your music as like a, a form of therapy and i wondered like how do you think music goes hand in hand with like mental health and and well-being and and that sort of thing I think to be honest it's like one of the biggest forms of release you know a lot of uh for me personally i think other musicians we all find it as a vice it's something mm-hmm. that when you're having a bad day and you're feeling down about something you know you, instead of you know like hitting the bottle and doing silly things like that you can just sit with a guitar and just vent it all out yeah and uh, i think it's a powerful tool which is something that we're really fortunate that we have because not everybody has a, a vice or an out way of doing things like that so yeah, I think it's a great thing for mental health, to be honest. It saved me. Music saved me. I mean, in lockdown, I was heavily drinking and just like mm. ruining my life. And uh, I had to I had to get away from that. And I picked up the guitar. I started writing. And before you knew it, that was it. I was hooked. It was like the new, yeah. new addiction, as they say, you know? Yeah. Um, well, 
Well, what one of the questions I was going to ask was like how how COVID kind of affected your musical journey because it's it's interesting. To, to a few of the different people I've spoken to have been in the same place as you, where they sort of really sort of got started during COVID, um, and then obviously there have been say I've spoken to bands who suddenly they weren't able to practice because of COVID. Um, yeah. So it's always interesting to hear the different ways that I suppose that that people use music as a as a tool to kind of get through COVID. But it, I, I like the way that you say it's. It's become something positive for you um, during that that darker time, I suppose. Oh man, it was the best thing that ever happened. I mean, I had I was pot because I was potting around the house for hours, like the rest of the yeah. world was. And like before music, I was working as a videographer, so I was doing all these working with musicians, and it just clicked. Like, why can't I just do it? And yeah, when I started doing that, I realised that you know it was just the way to do it, and it gave. After I started getting into it and I did this one song, because I knew everyone was sitting at home doing nothing. I had friends that were in music. So I was like, right, I'll just send them over some stems. Next thing yeah. you know, I had, a, I had a track sent back, my first single called Box. We put it online and it did really well. And then I uh, just kept doing that and I had loads of music. It was getting played on radios. And this was only in the first like three, four months of me actually doing music. Yeah. And then even, even through COVID, I was like, do you know what? I want to go and do a music video. So I just, I just went down to like Bournemouth. And I had some friends down there. We just went out, did videos when we weren't meant to be doing it. Yeah. I even filmed, I ended up in hospital uh, over COVID as well. I ended up filming a music video inside the hospital for one yeah. of my songs called In Extremist. So I ended up just using it, using it as this time that I knew everyone else was doing nothing to just accelerate yeah. forward. And for me, it was the moment lockdown ended, I was ready to then go and play, perform yeah. live. So Yeah, you'd already got some momentum going as well. Yeah, and that was it. I, and the moment everything opened up, I was hitting every open mic night I could in a week for like three or four months straight. And then yeah. after that, that's when the booking started. That's when I started getting gigs. And then a year later, that's it. I flew out to LA for the first time. And it's just been a catapulting experience since. Yeah. Awesome. Cool. Okay. Um, just a couple more questions I want to ask. Well, one of them is always a good one to ask musicians. Like, how do you approach songwriting? Do you start with lyrics and then uh, work on the music? Do you start with music and then work work on lyrics? Or does it depend for you? Uh, it really depends, man. I think sometimes I'll just be messing around on the guitar, come up with a melody, and then it'll be stored in my head for months. I won't touch it. And then I'll be out and about. Like this weekend, actually, I just went down to Hastings and I've, I've quit drinking then recently. Mm -hmm. So I went down to Hastings to hang around my friends. They're all drinking and going crazy, as you can imagine, the music world is like that. And uh, I was observing everything. So I just got on the train home yesterday after observing this whole 24-hour period of just watching the madness. And then just the lyrics, they just all fly out, man. I don't really... Yeah. Really, I Usually, songwriting for me is when something that's affecting my life or something around me, then it's really easy. It just falls out. I don't try and force it, if that makes sense. I just when the time's right and the idea is there it's, and then i came home and that was it on the guitar and then the bosh and that's pretty much been yeah. my whole whole kind of writing process the moment i try and sit down i force a song out of me it will just be blank paper <laughs> yeah so this, i just wait and then yeah and they come to you yeah and that's why i prefer putting myself in all different situations and moving around a lot and because the more you do that the more you're experiencing all these different things and then yeah yeah, and sometimes you know you can. I do put myself in like fake situations of like thinking how I could you know write not for myself but for other people, and that's always good fun. And then other yeah. times I'll just look at an object. Like I've written a song recently about a cup of tea, yeah. which is funny. It's not on the album, but this whole song is just about all in these different contexts. It's really funny. So it's just yeah. I guess it's just the mood I'm in and you know how how I'm feeling and just see what happens in it. Don't stress it. Yeah. <laughs> Cool. And so in the past, uh, I think I think I've read this right somewhere. So you were a sponsored skateboarder at one point as well. Is that right? Yeah, mate. So, started... so how did that come about? Well, I started skateboarding when I was 13 years old and then uh, skated for another 10 years through that point and through my like childhood pretty much. And uh, when I got to 18, I, I went out with a couple of lads from DVS and Spitfire. And we uh, I actually flew out to L.A. then. Mm -hmm. uh, went to the Berricks, you know, it was crazy, man. I was hanging around with like Eric Costa, and Mike Moe. I met like Rodney Mullen. I loved it, man. Cool. I loved skateboarding. For, it was one of the, it taught me a lot in life. It was one of the yeah. greatest, greatest things. And uh, to this day, every now and then I go back on it, but I had a bad injury where all my ligaments, my right ankle ripped when I was in my yeah. early 20s. And after that, you know, the, the bottle kind of just got lost, man. And it wasn't the same, you know, the, yeah. the feeling wasn't there anymore. So 
I just moved on to other creative outlets, but yeah. you know, surfing and snowboarding and things like that. But yeah, yeah. Mate, skateboarding, skateboarding days were nuts, especially with all the music back then. Like, yeah, it was good. <laughs> cool. Awesome. Um, and pretty much the last the last question is kind of two and one, really. So uh, what's next for you and where can people follow you to stay up to date? What's next for me? Whoa, the world only knows, but we've got the album Definitely T coming out this summer. Um, I'm off to L.A., so hopefully some new doors open out there. And then when I get back, I'm going to be recording the second album that's already written. Mm-hmm. It's called Butterfly Effect. So that's a little sneak peek for everyone. And uh, yeah, you guys can follow me on socials. It's at Young Era, official, spelled Y V N G Era, spelled Era, and then just official. And if you type that in on everything, it will pop up. Big thank you to Young Era for joining me. You're listening to the Art Show on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain, and this is One Day by Broken Colours. Everybody's happy in the world 
colors the stones with their distinct shapes I heard the sound of my pain walking so slowly my breath step by step reached the brandy water while she was bowing to the sun softly here I am everything is now peace but the wind can change a mirror in a labyrinth I was so wrong to have trees that come to my heart every moment can
That was Blue Wave by Betty Accorsi, and before that we had One Day by Broken Colours. You're listening to The Art Show on 106.6 FM Wickham Sound. I'm your host, Dane Cobain, and it is time for us to head over to the Oak Shed now to catch up with Twangling Jack Ford for this week's album review. Daft Punk. Random Access Memories. There is a certain kind of nostalgia where you look back fondly on something you did not like at the time. Or maybe that's just me. During the Disco Inferno, which had been brought on by the Saturday Night Fever, I was not a fan. I missed some classics because I was overwhelmed by the relentless stream of product. I missed the brilliance of Dancing Queen and Staying Alive, distracted by the likes of the Nolans. I also overlooked Chic and the guitar work of Nile Rodgers. Not only did I not appreciate Nile Rodgers, but I was annoyed by what he did to Diana Ross, Debbie Harry and David Bowie. But over the years I have started to enjoy the chomping. I have even tried it myself. It is as influential on guitarists as the Chuck Berry riff. It was the basis for a lot of 80s pop guitar like Duran Duran. And Nile Rodgers is also such an affable chap. One of those national treasures that come from another country, like Geldof, Frankie de Tori, and the Strictly Pros. Daft Punk are a French dance music duo, and Random Access Memories is a love letter to disco. Much of it is Nile Rodgers' funky scratchy guitar over disco beats, with vocoder vocals. The one thing I heard at discos that did blow my mind was I Feel Love by Donna Summer. And on this album there is a monologue by Giorgio Moroder explaining how he built the synth tracks on that song over a simple click track and basically invented electronic dance music. This album does have what is possibly one of the most overplayed songs of this century, Get Lucky, co-written by Daft Punk, Nile Rodgers and Pharrell Williams and sung by Pharrell Williams. It is a brilliant piece of work but I would have to skip it. The album is surprisingly song-based. Apart from the vocoder and some spacey filtered and sequenced synths, it is largely performed on real instruments. There is a Bowie-esque piano ballad and there are some serious string parts. It is quite low-key. Things don't drop in and return after a snare roll. It is less lager, 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 hey boy, hey girl, superstar, DJ, let's go, and more Hall and Oates. It looks like it's going to end the way a musical would end, with a big harmony vocal singing, if you lose your way tonight, that's how you know the magic's right. But that is followed by an astronaut's observation of Earth on top of the only track that really sounds how you would expect a daft punk album track to sound. Random Access Memories, Daft Punk. Big thank you to Twangling Jack Ford for this week's album review. Thank you to Young Era for being this week's guest. Thank you to A.B. Frank for this week's entry to the Rylight Zone. As always, you can find us on Facebook. If you search for The Art Show on Wickham Sound, you should be able to find us. We are repeat on Wickham Sound on Monday nights on the Wickham Sound Listen Again. We're on iTunes, Spotify and wherever else you get your podcasts. And you can reach out to me here at the studio by dropping me a line on dane.cobain at wickhamsound.org.uk. That's D-A-N-E dot C-O-B-A-I-N at wickhamsound.org.uk. So I'm going to love you and leave you for this week. I'm going to leave you with one last tune. This is Break Your Heart by my band, The Ilk. I'll catch you next week.